Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. It's party time at RC Model Reviews. Look, I've got the balloon out again because I'm talking about radio frequency and I'm trying to explain in simple terms how all this stuff works and there's no better way than with balloons because they're fun and they're easy. I'm no good throwing complicated formulas at you, get my slide rule out and, you know, trying to explain things using mathematics because, ah, uh, you know, even my eyes glaze over when we get into the math side of things. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how this works and why when you take a transmitter like this that does 200 milliwatts and you replace it with a transmitter that does a watt, I don't know where I've lost that one, no, it disappears, everything disappears here, but when you say you used 800 milliwatt version, if you used four times the power, you're only going to get twice the range. And if you use twice the power, you're going to get 1.4 times the range. And I'll show you why that is because, okay, here's our balloon. I've inflated it to 100 millimeters in diameter, which means it's 50 millimeters from the middle of this balloon to the outside. I'll zoom in for you so you can see what this balloon looks like when we get up close. Here we go, here it is, look. Now you can see I've put a little grid on there. This is 20 or two centimeters by two centimeters. And I put the little grids in there so you can see that it's solid, it's supposed to be. Um, Two centimetres by two centimetres, which means a total area of two times two is four. So the signal coming from the centre of my balloon covers an area of four square centimetres. It's simple, isn't it? So what do you think will happen when I inflate this balloon to twice its diameter? So effectively we're moving the receiver. Imagine the receiver sitting here and the transmitter's in the middle. What happens when I move my receiver twice as far away? How much less signal will I get? Will it be half? because we're measuring the signal strength in, the, in terms of the energy over what area. So if, if you double the area, you get half the strength, right? That's the way we're working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inflate this balloon to double its current diameter. Get a bit of puff in here. Where are we? Uh, a bit bigger than that. Now I'm measuring it against my little desk pad here. Here we go, let it down a bit. There we go, so I've done it. There we go. Now, I can tell you because I did this before, that is now 40 millimetres or 4 centimetres by 4 centimetres. Was 2 by 2, it's now 4 by 4. So each side has doubled, which is what you'd expect, right? Because we're twice as far away, so they've doubled. But because we're dealing with an area here, we need to do some more math. It was 2 times 2, 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres gave us 4 square centimetres. Now it's 4 centimetres by 4 centimetres, which gives us 16 square centimetres. So suddenly the, the energy of our transmitter is not spread over twice the area, it's spread over four times the area because both sides have doubled. And so that's what we call the inverse square law. It means every time you get twice as far away from the transmitter, every time you double your distance, you only get quarter the amount of power because it's spread over four times the area. So if you can follow that, you can understand that when we, I'll just zoom out so you can see my handsome face instead of this party balloon. So you can see that when we, um, when we move our transmitter four, uh, twice as far away as it was, then we get a quarter of the energy. So if we want to get twice the range, we have to increase the transmitter power by a factor of four. So if we get, say, a mile with this transmitter on 200 milliwatts, and we want to go two miles without changing anything else but the power, we'd have to use 800 milliwatts, four times the power. So four times the power for twice the distance doesn't sound very good, does it? In fact, it's really um, pretty crap, um, which is why I'm not an advocate of going for large amounts of power on your transmitter. You're much better to use a better antenna. You get something like this. Now, if this effectively had a gain, we use a simple gain, if it had a gain of 10 decibels, which would, it would mean that it would be the same as running 10 times the transmitter power, but it doesn't use any electricity. It's simple, it's great. And of course, 10 times the transmitter power, we can do the math and work out what that is, but it's say, which twice times twice is probably going to give you, um, I don't know, I'll do the maths later, I'll put it on the bottom because <laughs> my slide rule needs a new battery. Um, but suffice to say, going for really strong powerful transmitters, it's not such a win. Double the transmitter power, it's only 1.4 times as much more range. If you want twice the range, four times the power you have to use. Much better to use a high gain antenna. You get the same effect for free almost in terms of electrical power. So there you go. I hope that's explained things. I hope the balloon didn't scare you. See you again soon. Oh, questions on the bottom, comments on the bottom. If you didn't really get it, I'll do it again because I just did this impromptu video to try and um, you know fill you in on the details. So if you didn't like it, tell me. I'll try and do a better one. Bye for now. Thumbs up if you liked it.